Let's, let's please remember Sister Donna Davis's family. I heard from, I think it was Facebook earlier, that she passed away this morning about, I think they said about 4.30. And I know it's probably a hard time for that family. Um, so let's remember her. Y'all have any lost friends? And lost friends. And, um, Zach Terry.
Thank you. 
that was pulling with those bands of love. God is, he's, he's ineffable. There's no way to describe him. And his love is, is a, abounding and it's everlasting. And um, it's hard to describe, but it's vast and it's so overwhelming. And uh, he thought that we were worth saving and he saw your worth past your sins through the eyes of love on the cross. And um, I know that many times we say that nobody can go too far from the hands of mercy. But it's not true. If you reject the Lord right. and you be up, if you go beyond the reach of grace, then there's right. there's no help. That's why it's important that you don't reject Him and go beyond His reach of grace, because there may come a time when He won't deal with you anymore, and it'll be because you turned away and you rejected from Him. Second Corinthians six and two tells us, um, "Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day, the day of salvation." And uh, also. Um, We've read this scripture many times, but the book of John, chapter 10, and verses 9 and 10, it talks about the shepherd and his sheep. But it says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and they have it, that they might have it more abundantly. And um, I looked at the the word again for the for pasture and it means that they shall not want the needful supplies for the true life you're not going to lack what you need for the spiritual life the Lord is going to be there for you if you turn to him and you serve him it says that the thief cometh not for to steal kill and destroy and there's things that people take part in that sin and it's on, sin is only a pleasure for a season and it may seem like it's fun now but the, the devil wants to destroy you, but the Lord's there and he's wanting to give you life and he's showing you his love and he's wanting you to turn to him. First John 1 and 7 through 10 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And then the first verse of chapter 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So the Lord knew that we'd be a sinful people. The Lord knew that we would sin. He doesn't want us to sin. He, want us, he wants us to be saved, but it tells us that if we do sin, if we are living a sinful life, we can turn to him because he's our advocate. Um, advocate in the Greek is parakletos, which is somebody that's summoned or called to one side, especially to one's aid. It's someone who pleads another's cause before a judge, a pleader, counsel for defense, a legal assistant, or an advocate. It's you plead another cause for someone or you're an intercessor. Of Christ in his exaltation at God's right hand, he's pleading with God the Father for the pardon of our sins. In the widest sense, a advocate is a helper, a secure, an aider, and an assistant. And this is that of the Holy Spirit destined to take the place of Christ with the apostles after his ascension to the Father to lead them to a deeper knowledge of the gospel truth and give them divine strength needed to enable them to undergo trials and persecutions on behalf of the divine kingdom. There's uh, five different times that that verse is used. And it's um, used in John 14 and 15 where it's talking about the Holy Ghost and the Comforter that comes. And then in this passage when it's talking about our Advocate. This lets us know that the Holy Ghost is our Advocate and He convicts us when we do sin. And He won't just be there to convict you. And He won't just, He will not condemn you. The enemy condemns, but the Lord will convict you in love. But He'll also forgive you if you do repent. He took your place on the cross for every single sin. It wasn't just for one or two, just a few of them, but it was for all of our sins. We've always heard that quote, little quote that says, I love you to the moon and back. But I saw a picture one time that says that he loved you to the cross and back. And I believe that if the Lord, if Jesus was standing here, I believe he would tell you that he would do it all over again. If it was just for one person, I believe he would do it all over again. Um, when we read about the prodigal son, it says that he rejoiced over one sinner that was saved. There's rejoicing in heaven. Uh, when you were on the cross, 
when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. And it says in John 3, 16, Whoever, whosoever believeth in him. So that's for the sinner that's never known the Lord, that's never served him. It's for a backslider who may have known the Lord and for some reason turned back and backslidden along the way. It's for the believer. It's for everyone. It's for the atheists, the ones that don't believe there's a God. It's for the agnostics who aren't sure. And it's for the evolutionists who think that this world just happened from a big bang. The Lord loves every single one of them and he died on the cross for every single one of us and he knew that we would reject him and never believe in his name yet because of his vast abounding unfailing love he chose to die as a blasphemer when he was innocent and that that old song that says oh love of god how rich and pure how measureless and strong it's measureless you can't even describe the love of god i have on this little pike you can't really see it but it's, it says oh love of god and it says the love of God is long-suffering, it's overwhelming, it's vast and everlasting. And the love of God truly is overwhelming and it's everlasting no matter who it is that's turning to him. And, um, I'm coming to a close, but I just wanted to remind those out there that aren't saved that you can be saved. You can turn your heart to the Lord today and you don't have to wait because he does love you no matter what you've done.
and we'll see y'all again. I believe we're going to be on Thursday morning for Dad. Anyway, we love y'all. Y'all have a good night.